protective order. There is no objection. The court having reviewed the protective order regarding discovery will sign it now. The matter will be set for preliminary hearing setting in Department 31 on January 20th of 2021. Ms. Hawley, pursuant to Penal Code Section 859B, your client has the right to a speedy preliminary hearing within 10 court days of his arraignment, extended by an additional 20 court days of his arraignment pursuant to the presiding judge's general order, and also within 60 calendar days of his arraignment. Does your client understand those rights and give them up? She does, yes. The request has been made that the matter be continued until January 20th with the understanding that the preliminary hearing may begin within 15 court days of that date. Having waived the statutory speedy preliminary hearing rights, any continuance beyond that period will be governed by the good cause provisions of Penal Code Section 1050. Does your client understand that and agree to this time waiver? Yes. And do you join in those waivers? Yes. At the last court date, the court ordered counsel to ensure that Mr. Peterson had been served with a copy of the protective order. Did that occur? It did. Thank you. Bond is to stand. I would like to be heard with respect to the protective order issued on our last court hearing. Ms. Hawley. Thank you. I'm just really seeking clarification from this court. I've had conversations with Ms. Haw about this. As the court may be aware, both of the individuals involved in this case, both my client and the complaining witness, are public figures, both of whom have recording careers and very active social media accounts. This week, for example, there was an interview published in a major magazine in which the complaining witness spoke about allegations in this case that, from my vantage point, are prejudicial not only to my client but to the proceeding itself. And I recognize that this court has no jurisdiction over a witness, and I don't necessarily have a problem with the witness exercising her First Amendment rights. However, the protective order potentially, at least arguably, prevents my client from responding in a way that could be perceived as a communication with the complaining witness. He is very mindful of that. It is very difficult, as you might understand, for him to read these things, to which he strongly objects and denies, but wants to be in full compliance with this court's order and is therefore not speaking out in a way that would refute these allegations. And so I simply wanted to seek clarification from this court, given that he has a recording career where he has made thoughts in the past that, to a certain extent, address these issues. And there are, as I said, articles coming out in which the complaining witness is addressing them very specifically, and I simply wanted to know from this court what your point of view was in that regard. The protective order that was issued by this court speaks for itself. The court is unclear at this time specifically what your client would seek to do that might possibly be in violation. What I would propose is that if you know specifically of something that your client would like to say or do that you believe might be in violation of this protective order, that you set forth that question in writing and provide the people with an opportunity to respond. That will be due in writing no later than the next court date. Should you seek to have the matter litigated prior to then, please ask that the matter be set on calendar in the future home court. I appreciate that. And just so that the record is clear, the court is clear, he has not reached out to her directly since this occurred. This incident occurred back in July. I think that we're speaking only to social media or recording. And so the court's aware. My understanding is that after the protective order was issued, the defendant did in fact post what I believe was a roughly 30-minute Instagram live video, essentially talking about the facts of the case, but to which end he discussed specifically the witness or the victim and implied certain things about the victim lying. Although I am mindful he has certain First Amendment rights, that being said, there is a protective order with respect to not annoying, harassing, threatening, or intimidating the witness, knowing that he does have a large platform in which these individuals, his followers, do tag the victim. The victim certainly is exposed. She is essentially a captive audience to a lot of these comments. So I would ask, I know the defendant's not here, but certainly if he continues to do so, I would suggest that he certainly 
discuss that with prior with counsel prior to posting anything uh, that could potentially be construed as possibly intimidating behavior, annoying, harassing behavior, indirect contact to the victim. He has been subjected to threats already um, as a result of this case. And I do certainly have concerns with her safety and anything that may be perceived as possibly threatening this witness. The court will direct the parties to section 12 of the protective order that was issued. It states that Mr. Peterson must have no personal, electronic, telephonic, or written contact with the protected persons named in this order. If the people believe that Mr. Peterson has possibly been in violation of this court's order, the people are likewise ordered to submit their position in writing to this court no later than the next court date. Anything further from the defense at this time? No, thank you, Your Honor. Anything further from the people? No, thank you. That will be the order. Thank you. Thank you.